American healthcare kills, and it's because markets for healthcare services are grossly distorted. That's the assessment of David Goldhill, whose father died of a hospital-acquired infection. Goldhill wrote up what he discovered subsequently in an article for the Atlantic Monthly entitled "How American Healthcare Killed My Father." He spoke at a Cato Capitol Hill briefing October 1st, 2009. I believe if you're satisfied with your existing healthcare arrangements, it's because you don't know what it costs. And I don't mean just in terms of money. And frankly, I think all of the efforts here are likely to be peripheral to the fundamental issues we have in healthcare, until that 55% feels differently about what it has. Uh, I have done a number of interviews in which I've been asked to criticize one party or the other, and and I say the same thing. And and forgive me, but this is probably the extent of my political knowledge and views, which is we really can't expect politicians to go up against very large. Very well-funded interest groups, when a majority of Americans think things are fine, and it's just an unfair test for politicians of either party,、uh, and one, frankly, living outside of a political world, I, I don't, I don't apply.、Uh, I am here because of my father.、Uh, like all of us, you know, I have plenty of stories that about healthcare that that are mystifying to me, certainly compared to what I see in the rest of of, of my life.、Uh, but specifically, my deep interest in this began with what happened to my dad. Uh, a couple years ago, my father,、uh, working frankly up to the day this happened, walked into a hospital with a fairly mild case of pneumonia. It was an 82-year-old man. He turned 83 in the hospital.、Um, variety of ailments that you see in 82-year-old men.、Uh, I didn't expect him to live forever, forever, and I don't think he expected it either. He was a physician.、Um, he was in the hospital less than two days before he'd contracted sepsis, and over the course of the next five weeks. He had a variety of secondary infections, and by the time he died,、uh, that original pneumonia was long gone,、uh, and he died from a, a variety of infections he'd picked up in the hospital.、Um, like most of us,、uh, at the time I wasn't really aware of what was happening.、Uh, you see your father, a loved one, getting sick and getting sicker. It's a concern, and you're dealing with it obviously on a moment by moment, reactive basis. The same way, frankly, the, the hospital deals with it.、Um, But、uh, my sister's an emergency room physician, and so she had much greater perspective on it. And then、uh, I think it was literally two weeks after my father's death,、uh, I read this article in the New Yorker、uh, by Dr. Gawande, in which he talked about preventable hospital infections. And he talked about the fact that most estimates are that there are roughly a hundred thousand people, a hundred thousand Americans a year, that die from infections that they receive in hospitals, and there are two or three hundred thousand other. Deaths that are attributable to medical errors, but that this is one that's regarded as relatively correctable. He talked about a doctor who'd been running around the country with a series of protocols for sterility, that where they were applied reduced these uh, uh, deaths from、uh, infection by two thirds, three quarters, or more. And I think, you know, like like most people at that point, living in in in, in grief and loss,、uh, I was I was. You know, angry and, and looking for someone to, to to blame. I think all of us from that position when these things happen. But there's a there's a light bulb that went on in my mind, which is, you know, I've run a series of consumer facing businesses, and、uh, a lot of my friends run businesses. A hundred thousand deaths from something that's preventable. I mean, I, I I thought of being from Hollywood. I thought of all of the Hollywood movies in which the the corporation is the villain, and even the most villainous corporation didn't go out and kill a hundred thousand of its customers. Um, it, it, it just it just felt bizarre, just difficult to explain. And I began to think more carefully about what I'd seen because I spent a lot of the five weeks my father was in the hospital with my father, and I thought about how different the world of healthcare is from the world of everything else.、Uh, and, and and what I want to talk about today is is that the nature of healthcare, or is that something we have created because we believe healthcare is different? Uh, needless to say, anyone who read, has read my article knows I, I tend towards the latter point. That a lot of these things that are very different about healthcare are things we've created. How do you see it as a customer? Well, one thing you see, which is astonishing, is you see this extraordinary diagnostic equipment coexisting with a type of information system that I haven't seen maybe since the DMV in the 80s. I mean, if you really think about how a hospital deals with information technology. It's astonishing. It's 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 significantly worse than your typical dry cleaner does, 
Now, uh, one of the things I want to emphasize is that from a government perspective, a lot of people look at that and say, okay, let's get them information technology. I'm a businessman. When I see something like that, I know a choice has been made, a response to an incentive has occurred, or a disincentive. There was no congressional act that forced my dry cleaner to invest in information technology. He just didn't want to lose shirts, just shirts. The fact that my father was twice taken for procedures meant for other patients <laughs> is a cost of not investing in information technology. Why was that cost not born in the system in such a way that someone was incented to invest? And that's a lot of the questioning process I did. Uh, uh, my father was in the ICU for a lot of his time in the hospital. ICUs emphasize sterility. They pick up patient trash once a day. There's not a patient's room that isn't overflowing with trash in a sterile environment. If you've ever seen uh, anything manufactured in a sterile environment in the corporate world, whether it's uh, computer disks uh, uh, or even satellites, you'll recognize that those things can't coexist. They, they don't make any sense. Um, y you see, uh, in, you see the, the shifts in hospital labor. And again, I have an advantage here because my sister's an emergency room physician. Th there's no patient-facing reason for the way labor is allocated and shifted in a hospital. And what you come to realize as you spend time and you think these things through is that the reason for that is my father wasn't the customer. The customer in his case was Medicare. And all of us in business know our job is to be responsive to our customers. And so the first thing I saw is that this hospital has correctly responded to its customer. It's about volume. It's about clarity of billing. Um, it's about things, frankly, that we as patients don't care about. We're not the customer. We got a bill for my father's care of uh, roughly $640,000. Uh, that sounds like a lot of money. Our share was $992. I wish it had been more. Because if our share had been more, there's no chance on earth that that hospital would have been able to look my mother in the eye and defend its treatment. Uh, and one of the disadvantages you have when everything is paid for is you don't make decisions. Interestingly, the benefit of hindsight, with my father's specific case, and every case is different, is that we would have been better off treating him in a clinic, which would have emphasized just drugs and oxygen. We would have been better off, once he'd gotten sepsis, uh, giving him a trach at that point and going through the rehab. We would have been better off with cheaper alternatives, not in terms of money, because we didn't pay anything, but in terms of the quality of care. And one of the things that happens when you take out the price decision is you unfortunately, perversely, take out some of the urgency in making decisions about care. Most people don't believe that. I saw it up close. The fact that the hospital never had to wonder, how is this going to be paid for, also didn't create that conversation of, what are your real treatment alternatives? Again, every case is different. But this we clearly saw, and we clearly saw it, unfortunately, in retrospect. Um, the reality, of course, is when you start thinking about health care, you see that every single person has got a story. Some are less tragic than my father, although I'll tell you at 100,000 people a year, the number of letters I get since I wrote this article from people who've experienced this, often in very similar, in some cases even more negligent circumstances, uh, is extraordinary. Uh, the fact that it itself isn't our debate about health care, that our debate isn't about quality, it's just about money, indicates something very, very wrong. David Goldhill is CEO of the Game Show Network and author of the Atlantic Monthly cover story, How American Health Care Killed My Father, published in September. You can watch the full event at Cato.org.